meeting with the Tinley Park Planning Commission for um, July 19th, 2018 to order and begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stanton? Here. Angle? Here. Manny? Here. Gatto? Here. Etchison? Here. Vic? Here. Shaw? Here. Do we have any communications from staff this evening? No. Um, Kim Kimberly's out sick today, so I'll be taking over her case. Um, it's pretty straightforward, so I think I got a hold of it. But she's at home getting better, so just right. taking over that. You, That's it. Uh, we wish her speedy recovery. All right. Uh, so, for all our regular viewers of the Department Planning Commission, I noticed that we have two new faces here, and uh, I'm not going to introduce her. Themselves. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is uh, Stephen Vick. I am uh, been a resident of Tinley Park for the last 23 years. About I've um, I used to be a uh, volunteer slash part time person with emergency management here in town. I spent uh, 17 years doing that. Um, currently, I um, I'm a self contractor for a medical education company. So that's. And I'm also a uh, part-time firefighter paramedic in the city of Country Club Hills. So. All right, welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, Mary Aitchison, lifelong resident. I won't give you the years because that would give you my age. <laughs> um, and I currently build bridges for a highway contractor. Some interesting experience here. Welcome aboard. And uh, I'm going to assume you've been duly sworn in. And um, you've at least seen a meeting or two and have a, a little bit of a crash course. Um, I believe uh, Dan or Kimberly, somebody must uh, have spoken with you guys. Uh, if, uh, if you're not familiar with procedure, you know, don't be afraid to ask a question. You know, you move along, just say, Mr. Chairman, interrupt us and see how we go. All right? 10-4. All right. So moving right along, um, first, uh, next item is the uh, approval of the minutes of the July 5th, 2018 regular meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Aye. Uh, motion to Commissioner Gatto. Second. Sec uh, second. Second Commissioner Stanton. Do we have any comments, uh, edits, corrections, additions on the discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none. Do I have a motion? I'm sorry. All in favor of approving the Minutes of the July 2018 regular meeting say aye. 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 Opposed? Sign. Motion carries. Meeting uh, minutes are approved. So moving right along here. The first item <coughs> on our agenda tonight is a workshop. Uh, name is Rickert, 6811 Hickory Street, site plan approval with a variation. Uh, more commonly known as Banging Gavel. Welcome again, sir, for joining us. Uh, we will move straight forward to the staff presentation. Sure, so um, <coughs> the petitioner is looking, so originally the site plan and special use came before you guys um, got approval. Uh, originally the patio area had a a, I guess here's a, here's a couple of pictures of the existing site and then the boat building if you're not for anyone new looking at this site um, sticks out right outside the downtown um, just south of the tracks so, um, so originally they had a kind of outdoor bar area that, that was kind of planned for this area and their site plan um, for a little bit about it then it really wasn't going to work from a beer quality perspective and, and kind of what they were thinking um, but with 
the programming they kind of had envisioned and the, the outdoor seating they had envisioned out there they thought a a bathroom would would work pretty well out there um, especially if they have music or events having large amounts of people kind of going in and out of the doors and, and in and out of the building kind of seemed like like this would be useful um, so our, our code does not allow for um, accessory structures in a front yard so that goes for residential commercial industrial pretty much you, you can't have a shed or any type of garage or something in the front yard of your house so um, this is a pretty unique situation though especially in this area of town um, with this big of a lot a historic structure like this and then also with it being used as a commercial building um, this will be located on the, the secondary front yard um, that's closer to Oak Park Avenue. So. so I guess the the site is zoned DC which is downtown core and in our legacy district uh, there so their their site plan here covers where they are putting the restroom area this will also have a service area kind of for hand washing of the servers an area for them to kind of put some of the the dishes that they'll be using uh, just a little area there for them to for, for the servers and the staff to utilize um, as well as then a, a men's a men's restroom and a women's restroom on there um, so this will be a 164 square foot accessory structure um, good. so the current plans on here have it slightly overhanging the property line so one of our open items is to revise the plan to, to either make the structure a little smaller or shift it a little bit further north so that way the eave doesn't overhang the property line um, the parking spaces just south of there are now owned by the village so that was subdivided a while back and, and the village bought the kind of the parking to the south of that and then the the drive aisle um, there so it'll be public parking and kind of a public access area around the back and on the side of this building um, so that's our kind of first open item the second one is that when we were reviewing this um, they had originally there were some coolers on the back now they have air handlers that they've put kind of on the back of the building so those will be required to be screened um, I think the petitioners agreed with that but we just going to the the public hearing we'd like to see what kind of screening what kind of fencing they'll use um, we have we haven't really directed them in a specific style they've been uh, most of this project has been trying to keep uh, historic significance and an overall tone of the site so Typically, we ask for PVC on a lot of commercial properties just because of the, the wear and tear, the durability PVC has. I, I'm not sure if that really fits here because they didn't have PVC in the 1800s. Um, so we haven't really directed, directed them exactly what to do on that and have kind of left that up to them. Maybe if you guys have a few opinions, that'll be good too. Um, so the architecture on this is it, it's primarily uh, five inch lap hardy board siding um, they proposed it to be kind of a beige color and then brown brown architectural shingles um, these comply with the legacy code material standards which require 75 percent of any buildings um, to comprise a brick stone or fiber cement siding which is hardy board um, so then uh, on this last proposal they've had the two doors are facing Oak Park Avenue uh, facing to the east towards Oak Park Avenue um, they have we kind of threw it out there that maybe maybe you could rotate that building and face them in towards the building uh, maybe do some kind of seating or something then on the back side of the building that'll kind of liven it up so having talked to them today I think that's where they're planning to go forward so you may see a revised proposal um, for the for the public hearing with the the building actually rotated 180 degrees to kind of flip the doors to, to towards the principal structure towards the boat building um, we did 
So one of the open items was for them to submit a color rendering on this. We did, so yesterday they did submit a color rendering, which is up on the screen now, um, kind of showing the building and the layout out there. Um, so a couple comments that we had had with this from an architectural perspective was, uh, could, could they, the, the door color, the trim color, they have uh, um, shutters on there as well, kind of to give it some architectural appeal um, and for the waiters to kind of dump stuff in. It was, could that stuff be kind of a beige or a white or a tan, kind of connect it to the building and not make it all kind of one brown color? Um, and then it, as well as it's, so the root, the roof color is another one that we've kind of brought up is that maybe you could have, they have brown shingles on the accessory structure, maybe can match closely to the principal structure and maybe do a, a gray or something of that color. We don't want it to look like a mini version dollhouse of the main building, but we also want it to kind of maybe look a little more aesthetically pleasing with them putting an accessory structure um, that'll be pretty visible to, to people walking by and from Oak Park Avenue. So. Um, those were kind of some suggestions that we had made to them. They seemed fairly open to it, but I think it'll be interesting. That any comments you guys have or suggestions for that too, um, that's, that's an open item that we have. Um, as for the rest of the site, it's pretty much staying the same as what you guys approved before, so there's no additional signage on this building, um, no additional lighting fixtures on the building. So everything else will kind of be the same site-wise. Um, so then the last open item is the variation itself since accessory structures aren't permitted in the front yard um, of commercial properties or in the downtown legacy district so this will be just an open item of is, is that a reasonable variance to request in this in this situation so I believe that's that's pretty much it for our staff report um, I have a list of open items out there, but I'll send it back to you guys. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that, Dan. You're welcome. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start with the uh, commissioners. Uh, any questions? I'll start down here on the right side with uh, Commissioner Hengel. Do you have any questions for uh, either staff or the petitioner? I was wondering, is there any other buildings or businesses in Tinley that have like an outdoor bathroom building separate from their main building? Not that I can picture on the top of my head, but there's not very many that have an outdoor seating area of this capacity mm -hmm. either. Um, <clears throat> so I, I can't picture any and there's none that we really came aware of. Okay. But, but we also don't have anything that'll be similar to this at all with a brewery and an outdoor seating area, a stage. We really don't have a similar one like that. Okay. Um, I mean, park, a bunch of parks have, the park district has different, yeah. different kind of outhouse type buildings like this in it, but nothing else in the downtown or commercial What areas. about other areas outside of Tinley? Is there anything that's... It, Maybe they can, because I know the, they kind of modeled this off something else. So maybe it, if Jim wants to. Uh, the Patent House in Geneva, Illinois is where I got the inspiration for this. I'm sorry, what was it called? It's the Patent House in Geneva, Illinois, which is also a historical home, okay. which has been converted into a um, upper scale restaurant. And they also have a, um, a seating area outside. I'm not going to call it a beer garden because it's not, but it's outdoor seating and they have a structure similar to what we're proposing. And I saw it and I'm like, this is perfect. Because okay. the need for this is because the, the bathrooms and the main structure are on the second floor. And I don't think people would be overly enthused about right. having to walk all the way from the beer garden right. all the way to the second <coughs> floor of the main structure to right. the right. used restroom. That makes total sense to me. And these are handicap accessible? Yeah. Or? Yes. Oh yeah. ADA compliant. Okay. Do you know how much seating space you're losing by adding this? We're not losing any. No? Because the original structure as designed was going to be utilized as an outdoor bar. And we're eliminating that and replacing it with this. I think this is more a practical function and use of that space. Okay. Yep. So 
so just in the interest of uh, being orderly, I'm going to check with the Commissioner Engel. Did you have any additional questions? No. Okay, thank you. Um, to, just two comments. Um, I think uh, I, I agree with staff that the door should open out facing the building. You know, it'd be more attractive, and and also um, based on the the first open item, we want to make sure not only that there's out the property, but then just the, the foundation itself is away from the you're not leaning over the Could you, you know, uh, not in your property. I, I couldn't. Hear you. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I just want to make sure you know just the foundation structure itself is also within your property, but it looks good. It looks it looks good. That's all. And I think they, you guys have already kind of settled on flipping it, right? Well, so yeah, it had to be four okay, so five. yeah, so when we looked at it, we're like, this doesn't make sense. We need to flip it so that the doors are facing towards the west. You know. Because there's a sidewalk right there, and there's also, you know, more privacy and so forth. And then having the, you know, having the, the full wall, if you will, facing towards the east will allow us to put ledging along the structure there, where we can add a few more bar stools for outdoor seating and mm -hmm. so forth. So it, it makes perfect sense. Okay. So, uh, can you pronounce your name for me? Oh, H S N. H yep. Okay. Well, I don't have anything. Uh, any questions? No. Okay. Um, so heading back down here, uh, Lord Commissioner Sam, did you have? Did no, you nothing else. I think the answer the question and Excellent. good to me. Uh, Commissioner Gavin, any follow up questions? No, I'm good. I actually looked. The building looks very similar to the patent right. house, so. Oh, you're familiar with it? No, I just looked it up. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to see. <laughs> Quite I wanted to see. <laughs> Technology in Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Beck, any uh, questions, comments? No, I have no, no questions at all. I would just like to say that um, the staff's uh, recommendations on the coloring of, like, the trim and doors and stuff would be, I think, good. Make it match a little bit, not exactly like the main building, but, you know, a lot closer oh, to oh, that yeah. and the roof. Uh, color of the roof shingles matching that pretty closely would be good for it. Great. Um, could we get the color rendering back up on the? Uh, sure. Okay. So I'll, I'll say for myself, I did. I did have a couple of points here, but as, as long as uh, mentioned it, uh, I agree on that point uh, about having it be consistent with the main building. And, Potentially even consistent with the design of the, uh, uh, the uh, bandstand, or I, I'm not sure entirely what we're calling it, uh, uh, because those two aren't exactly identical in design, but they clearly complement each other. So some something in between. Uh, I'm not an exterior designer, so I, I couldn't really advise much further. And they had an architect that we also talked to because originally we thought should this be brick or something and really from a historical perspective they had thought about that a little bit as they didn't want to exactly mirror it to that building so they thought the hardy boards historically that's at least closer to what you'd actually see if they had some kind of house yeah, building. I, I completely agree and that's kind of why I was saying tie it into the um, kind of the pergola uh, stone feel even <coughs> it's just like a little enough there I just want to toss it out there so the uh, I remember when we went through a set plan approval originally in, in the bar uh, it was, there is it effectively the same footprint I mean it's is it a slightly larger or smaller uh, than what was originally proposed there it, it, it's a problem it's real it's real real I mean and, you know, it looks uh, so I would agree with um, Flipping the doors there, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, uh, I, I think there was a comment in there about signage. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm looking at that, and as a patron, you know, thinking about being there. If somebody, if somebody didn't necessarily know that those were, the, there was an outbuilding for the restrooms, they might not know. Um, and I know the sign code does allow for directional signage. You know, uh, so is there a plan to have anything that? It says restrooms. Just men and women's. 
<laughs> well, you can walk by that almost right. entirely. Yeah. Almost, you right. really know where to get into the patio without walking by that. Okay. Yeah. So right. there should be seeing the men's and women's. I would, I would think. Should yeah. Be yeah. I mean, my thought on it would be, as it's situated now, it would be really obvious. But if you flip the doors <laughs> oh, yeah, on the other right. side, it might it might not be as obvious. Right. So, and, and I hate there. You know, I'm pointing out that um, directional signage is allowed, so uh, you know, staff should consider this. I I wouldn't see that they would need any sort of uh, uh, approval or variance on if they decided to say. Hey, yeah, if there's right. something a little bit small or something directional yeah. wise, or it says you know brewery, a uh, bit gar garden bathrooms or something something, something like that. If something there's something they, they want to do, we can. <laughs> yeah, so we can we can figure that out. So I would assume because it's plumbing, there there would have to be some sort of stacks on on the, the roof of it. And yeah, it'd be a vent stack. Okay. Yeah, I mean I didn't see that in any of the renderings, and you know from having seen this sort of thing before, that can be done very tastefully or not. Um, it could be just an ugly PVC pipe sticking up there. So no, no, we'll make it one day. Yeah. Based on what I've seen you guys do so far, um, I, I trust that it's going to be that way. I just wanted to make sure that we we draw that out there. Um, for the, uh, the the point about it uh, being shown across the property line, is that maybe uh, a result of the recent property line corrections that were done all the way up and down that stretch? Do you know? No. Or is that just simply it was an error? Well, shoot, put it in the wrong place. Okay. So it's best, but I think they probably put you know put the foundation on said well that fit and then when they put the roof on it was then hanging over the property line so right. I think it was maybe just an error there um, but we'll uh, I think we can have that corrected by the next and public so hearing. I would agree with you on uh, screening material for the air handlers uh, you know having them screened um, I know. You know, in, in recent times, uh, uh, many of the folks on the commission have had a, uh, um, a preference for PVC. Uh, in this case, I actually I, I agree with staff that PVC might you know, look out of place. Um, so, uh, you know, to the extent you're looking for a material there, I would agree that PVC. Uh, any thoughts on that point from the commissioners? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that it would have to be like full brick masonry or something like that. Well, that's true. Um, I just wouldn't want to hold them to PVC because we kind of had a preference. Yeah, and I, that's kind of been the preference. Obviously, this is a little different situation. So maybe wood, a nice stained wood or something. Well, also, that the state is going to start this yeah. on. The park district is going to dictate what we're going to put up there. Yeah. Actually, everything we do is reviewed by them. Yeah. yeah. From a materials perspective, we very much will be looking over there, suggesting and requiring, uh, and as long as it doesn't really fly in the face of what you guys are suggesting and requiring, that's what we would do. Uh, I think, no, without speaking for them, I think that's kind of where uh, yeah, they're, they're probably more of an expert than I have a little bit of a historic knowledge they may too, but I, they're probably the experts to tell you what's actually right for that time period. So. My, uh, my, my only reason for bringing it up is that it, in, in the past, there has been an express preference by the commission for PVC in certain types of situations. And I'm just making sure that we don't get hung up on that because there isn't in this case, right? Um, so uh, are, is there a plan or expectation for, this is gonna be not a question, but for these, uh, restrooms to be open to the public outside of business hours. No. I assume they're in a closed gate and they'll be security locked, etc. Okay. They'll only be utilized during the beer garden season. Yep. So when the beer garden is not open, the bathrooms are not here. Hi. Yeah, that's all I have for you. I, I was trying to envision what it would look like if you did flip it and the doors on the other side, you essentially have a blank. It might be a nice spot for a big old TV or something. So, cross my mind. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, if there are no further questions from the commission, no further comments, we uh, just get a, a very quick uh, recap of all of our uh, open items and 
a sense for uh, expectations on clearing. Are you looking yeah, at? I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I didn't know if you guys were no, no, I was, I was talking about. over to you. Okay. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the revised plans. Yeah, the revised plans um, showing the accessory structure over the prop or not showing the accessory structure over the property lines. So we're getting the revised plan showing that. Um, the so the exhibit showing the the fencing that they're going to use around the air handlers. Um, it sounds like they they can maybe talk to the the park service and figure out what's probably best, but not PVC seems like the preference. So wood or some type of masonry or maybe something like that. Um, then so they provided the color rendering already, so that open items out. Um, but we are looking for some changes maybe in the paint to add um, maybe white cream or a light beige to the the doors, the shutters, and then the trim on the structure as well as match the um, roof material to the existing structure maybe not exactly but but close to it in color um, and then the variation seemed acceptable to you guys to in, in this situation so. so as I'm seeing it um, I don't really see any obstacles to uh, moving forward uh, with this That yeah, well? it sounds they're like they could, they'll be able to, but they're in agreement, and it sounds like we'll be able to maybe have some updated plans for you guys on the next meeting showing, showing what we talked about uh, for the public hearing. And security cameras are still in, okay, so be inside and outside on the grounds. Great. Well, uh, I don't want to belabor the point anymore. Uh, we do have in the report the standards for site plan approval and standards for variation, but in the interest of moving forward at this point, unless there's no objection, or unless there are objections, um, I don't think we need to run through all of those. Um, next step in here is we, uh, we do have a public hearing for this. Yes, August August second will be the so the next planning commission meeting will be the public hearing and we can draft some we'll draft the the standards for the variation and site plan at that time we can okay. run through them at that time. So. And uh, it, at least from my perspective, it, it looks like uh, all open concerns or questions are answered. Open items certainly easy to clear. So we'll move on to the next item. Thank you uh, for. Continuing to push everything through the process, I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to it. Right, so if you guys don't have anything else for us, uh, we'll thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. August second. August second. Well, I said around. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't. You weren't wrong. Thank you. Good night. All right. So moving on, the next item on the agenda this evening. Uh, is another workshop for two men in a truck, 7420 and 7430 Dumont Drive, set plan approval with variations. Um, you're representing the petitioner or for a lot of the petitioner? Yeah, I am. Okay, well, welcome. Uh, we're going to uh, hear from Dan here, the uh, staff report. So, uh, yeah, so this is two men in a truck. They are moving in off the the Duban Drive um, industrial area. They're going into an existing building and then there's an existing building with parking lot and then there's a vacant parcel next to it um, which they're looking to expand and put a parking lot in there so that way they can uh, store their trucks there overnight, um, use it as additional employee parking. So that that's where this stems from. Um, the petitioner has also gotten gotten some approvals through through the village and through the county to get some tax incentives on this and kind of you know move into the property, invest into the property. So um, he's already been to the village board for some of that stuff. Um, so the, the existing site is essentially two parcels that equal 2.25 acres combined in area. Um, this, if you guys. I'm sure most of you have been through the Duvan Drive area at some point. It's kind of hit or 
miss with a lot of miss out there in terms of aesthetic design right. and and your kind of planning principles out there it's an older industrial area um, that was kind of constructed in the 60s and 70s though so they're narrow lots that kind of go long kind of on both sides um, so it is a challenging situation out there to kind of try and get redevelopment It's also challenging to meet our codes with kind of tight narrow lots like that so um, with that uh, Paul from two men in a truck though has found a way to use two parcels to to really serve his needs here um, there's there's a lot of industrial equipment kind of storage auto body work uh, the Duvan Drive overlay district also kind of opens up our typical ORI zoning to allow some additional uses so ORI is typically office and restricted industrial which is kind of your light industrial not a lot of equipment storage but, um, the the Duvan Drive overlay district kind of opens that up again to allow some auto auto oriented businesses auto repair shops um, allows restaurants in there Salinas Pizza um, is is kind of outside of this but kind of in that general area so it 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 calls it mixed use it's not your typical way that you think of a mixed use building though it's more like a just a different different use group out there just because it's a challenging area to, to try and get uh, redevelopment in so there there has been a few redevelopments out there in the last 10 or 20 years um, probably the the gold standard example was the the uh, state of Illinois air team site out there so they actually had installed pretty intensive landscaping they did a nice layout nice structure doesn't look I was out there last week definitely doesn't look like that anymore it's a little more overgrown and stuff but they still did um, do kind of trees landscaping upgraded um, that way there's a couple other sites out there too over the years that have had either special uses or redeveloped that have kind of tried to bring their their parcels um, kind of closer to our standards today especially in regards to landscaping uh, the school district site which is right next to the petitioner site um, they did some kind of sidewalks some landscaping out in front uh, further down there's a couple as well so uh, again this is um, zones ORI ME1 um, it, it's pretty much surrounded by similar zoning to the west the east and to the south uh, to the north is R6 planned PD but it's a planned unit development with medium density residential um, apartments and condo buildings I think they're about four stories um, so that's just to the north of this site not not your typical setup there either to have industrial and, and uh, residential uses like that but it again has been that way for since at least the 60s and 70s where most of that was developed um, so this is just a quick showing of what the existing site is now so a, a long industrial building with park a, a long industrial building built almost to the property line um, on the west side and then parking on the east and then to the west of that lot is the vacant site um, so and here's a quick the proposed landscape I'll kind of get more in a detail of that in a little bit uh, but here is the proposed site so um, the petitioners constructing again a parking lot with kind of the intent of it being for for his truck storage and truck parking um, trucks going in and out of it into the building um, moving moving materials and um, in and out of there for for his clients um, Typically in this situation where you're developing two parcels, we typically like to see them um, combined and, and consolidated into one single lot that kind of allows you to easier meet the, again, the zoning code, the landscape codes. Um, and since it really all functions as one, that's usually our preference. Um, in this situation, there's been some challenges in terms of 
timing of this and, and when the petitioner is looking to move his business in there when he needs to start construction as well as with the um, the economic development incentives he had gotten from the county are kind of tar tied to the pins and tied to the parcels so there would be kind of some conflicts and or or some additional timing and and property uh, some additional work there to consolidate these lots so uh, just going forward though the the benefit of consolidating lots is especially out here would be extremely beneficial to kind of um, lessen the the narrowness of, of the lots so um, there there is a section of our code though that he's utilizing for this that allows you to have parking off-site so if it's within it, if it's within 300 feet of the site and then the two parcels are under the same name um, our zoning code says you can utilize that parking as your business parking so uh, the petitioners it, instead of consolidating has said uh, you know that works a little bit easier for him um, he's drafted the deed documents um, he got that to us last week and so our attorneys are kind of reviewing it make sure making sure um, those deed restriction documents when recorded will do what we want them to do um, we the staff also kind of recommended that we would really like to see a condition in those those deed those recorded deed documents that require the removal of the parking lot if they are sold off so the the deed restriction and the code only requires that as long as the business is there and it needs that parking that's how they have to stay under the same ownership um, so once the business leaves he could could have theory he could theoretically sell the two parcels off again um, to separate owners since this is all being designed they're asking for variations kind of based on the fact that that these are going to function together um, we wanted them to to add that into the deed restriction that they'd have to remove the parking lot so they've agreed um, they put it in the draft that we received last week so Again, our attorneys are looking at that, and that should be in your packets uh, for the public hearing. Um, we we are recommending that just we'll, we'll put a condition on this that'll also a condition tied to the variations and the site plan that will require the removal, um, just for the future reference, I guess. Is uh, if we're we're all gone and everyone new is looking at this fresh, um, if you have a planner or someone at the village that. You know we can look up and see that these variations require the removal um, won't necessarily have to do a title search to find out that they're supposed to remove it so um, just some just an additional way to make sure that that's that's covered in the future um, so that covers kind of our open items one and two is that um, I guess an open item one I did also kind of recommend that you know maybe there would be a condition within a certain time frame to consolidate the lot um, kind of to associate, uh, help that but with the economic incentives I've been told that that would be hard to at that even if we you know we said within a year it could make those incentives difficult so I that, that was our kind of initial thought but having talked to the petitioner and our economic development director he's seems like it's a it, it would be difficult to require the consolidation at this time due to those um, those incentives um, so. so again um, the, the warehouse building is 23,500 square feet and he's he's looking to add um, I think what was in your original packet was not the most updated plans um, it, it had some additional parking that was along the building on the new parking lot so he does have updated plans now that that kind of remove that parking so in the new parking lot it would have 16 truck spaces and eight additional employees parking spaces um, he's planning to add overhead doors to the west side of the existing building now. Um, and this will also have a, sorry, a large detention facility that will span the two parcels. So uh, in order to meet the MWRD kind of stormwater ordinance, um, they've had to build a 
a detention pond in the back that, that'll cover that. Uh, I believe it's five or six feet deep, so it'll be a pretty significant back there. Uh, just to go through parking really quick is um, that having looked at our code and what the required parking spaces would be, um, there's different parking requirements for warehousing, which is more based on, on how many employees you have. And then there's um, also parking requirements for the amount of office they have. So we kind of ran those numbers, came out with a 41 standard parking spaces would be required in addition to whatever trucks he's parking, he would need parking for those as well. So um, he's proposed 49 parking spaces in here. So eight over what the minimum is. Uh, he seemed to indicate that that'll be sufficient parking. Um, and then the 16 truck parking spaces, which is kind of the minimum I think he needs, which is what what kind of set up most of this site plan was those truck parking spaces, since that's really his, his need for his business at this location. Um, I, he's consolidating, I believe, three, three other uh, locations he has into this one. So he's really got He's kind of got the set number of spaces he needs to have there, um, which kind of gets into the variation as well as why why the parking's in the front yard, which I can get into a little bit more later. Uh, quickly just go over signage and the architecture side of this is there's an existing wall sign there now and there's an existing ground sign. Um, his plans to basically replace the wall sign panel so it'll kind of stay the way it is. He's just going to put instead of saying financial applications corporation it'll say two men in a truck and then his plans to remove the ground sign because it's not compliant with our code right now so in the future if he does want to get a ground sign he still can um, it'll just have to be compliant with our code which requires a little more substantial base and um, not two by four stuck in the ground anymore so uh, for now he's since the public will not really be visiting this as more his employees um, and his staff and may, maybe some business contacts it really won't be customers coming there to like drop their stuff off he doesn't really need a ground sign at this point but he will have that option so um, architecture wise is it's pretty pretty basic industrial building um, it's got a little bit of a front facade kind of on the office area and then the rest of it's kind of a industrial storage warehouse that you'd, you'd see typically. Um, and again, this is a quick kind of just not, not to scale interpretation of where he's planning on putting in some overhead doors and some pedestrian doors on the west side of the building um, to allow for trucks to get in and out and then to allow pedestrians and employees to get in and out. Um, lighting, he's planning on lighting from, from the building, so he'll light the parking lot with, with uh, full cutoff, downcast LED lights that'll, that'll light that. Um, we also, early on in the process, recommended that maybe he looks into the existing side and kind of mirror the, the lights on that side or get something similar to, to switch them over from the old wall packs to, to new LED lights, and I believe he, he, he was okay with that and came with us um, came to us with a new plan showing that as well so it'll be a full site the existing and the new site will be lit by downcast LEDs the, the exact light fixtures are a little different because the, the old side requires basically less light so they're a little bit smaller fixtures on the existing side um, so kind of our big our big discussion on this is kind of in regards to landscaping and then the fencing so um, going into this the petitioner's goal and our goal was kind of a, a big focus on the streetscape side of this is how does this look al along to van drive um, this will kind of be the the first redevelopment out there in a while that we we want to be able to see that turn into a little bit more modern a little bit nicer looking industrial park than what's out there now um, so the thought was really try and beef up that, that kind of front facade in terms of landscaping and aesthetics, as well as a, um, a focus on the north side of this where we have residents that live in multifamily housing and can't, 
they're kind of used to this now. I would say there's probably not anybody there from when it was originally built. So most people moved in seeing this, but can we make that a little better, um, a little more substantial screening and buffer there for the residents to the north? So those were kind of the two primary focuses we had going into this um, and trying to meet meet the code requirements and, and really maybe go a step further on those two sites. So. Um, in terms of most in terms of the landscaping the basically the south side of the lot the main frontage of the site uh, the petitioners really gone and, and met the code in terms of our buffer yard requirements um, he's also carried that kind of around the corner onto the west side um, where he, he's got pretty substantial landscaping and meets the buffer yard requirements um, and then going further north, kind of on the west side, he's he's currently, as proposed, kind of some tall grasses, um, I think some arborvitaes, some smaller shrubs along, along the west side. Um, the north side, he has evergreen trees proposed for basically two sides of it with there's an existing garage that's on the residential side um, that he's kind of left open. And then on the east side of this, there's no landscaping because again, the, they've kind of pushed the two lots together. So that is typically you have to kind of do a buffer yard all the way around the lot. In this situation, there's there's no buffer yard on the east side. Um, and then on the existing site, which we kind of looked at, could you get landscaping on the east side of the <coughs> existing site? Um, you really can't fit that without either removing all the parking or making the drive aisle not really usable. So the, in terms of fencing, he's ba there's fencing in the front of this that goes all the way up, kind of follows the parking lot line um, from the building in the front. There, there's no gate or fencing across <coughs> the, the driveway right now of the new parking lot. So there's no gate there. It, originally, that's kind of what he was proposing, but there are some issues there. In, in terms of fire access, in terms of uh, fire exiting, if people are coming out of the building, they need to be able to not be trapped in a parking lot. So there was some some kinks to be worked out there. So for he kind of just scrapped that. He's still going to fence it though, um, not along the driveway, just for some privacy and security reasons, just to to make it seem substantial. Um, that'll be PVC in the front yard. So the he's. He's used PVC in the front yard. It'll then transition um, to chain link on the west side of this. Mm -hmm. It'll tie in with his neighbor to the west. The neighboring property has chain link fencing, so it'll tie into that. Um, along the north side, he's proposed wood fencing, um, which is one of our open items is to, to basically turn that into PVC fencing instead of wood just the, the the durability factor of it um, it's a kind of a hard place to access to with the detention pond there so we've kind of thought and it's difficult to access both sides of the fence so when there is issues they would have to leave their property and go on to the multifamily property to repaint it or stain it so we've kind of thought pvc will, will be a little bit more substantial screening and have a little bit more durability um, in regards to the proposed landscaping, oh, there's also, so there's a requirement for any parking lot to also have interior landscaping in their parking lot. So 15% of any parking lot has to have landscaping. There's a certain number of trees you have to have. Um, that kind of relates to, to all parking lots in the village. This is a pretty unique situation though, seeing as they've, that this isn't, a, a parking lot that the general public visits or customers visit um, and then there's also the the technical side of it or operational side of moving trucks in and out of here if you have landscaping and islands um, you, you, you'll see those all over the place with you know mud tracks or dead landscaping in them um, or trees that get hit so he has proposed to kind of remove the landscaping from the interior of this and then try to beef it up on the outside. Um, staff still has some concerns on the the west and basically the north side is 
the, they don't meet the typical buffer yard requirements. Um, the, there's typically more shrubs and more trees that are involved. In terms of shrubs on, on this site, it's an industrial site, so we've kind of said, you know, we get it. Uh, shrubs are a little bit more difficult to, to plant to maintain on this property, but we have, as open item number three kind of indicates, we, we'd like to see some additional trees maybe put in here in substitution of, of the um, shrubs or arborvitaes and stuff they've done um, just to give it some a little more coverage out there in terms of tree coverage, which is, is good for the lot, it's good for the environment, um, and, and it'll kind of help compensate for some of the lost trees in the parking lot itself. So um, that's that's an open item just kind of for your guys' discussion too, is should there be trees there? Is there additional landscaping? Um, there, there's a table in your guys' packet that kind of outlines every little detail of what those buffer yards are supposed to require um, he's not quite there but again this is a pretty unique situation too with you have one site already developed you're developing kind of half a site um, and then you have the trucks as well which uh, are kind of an X factor in this so um, those are the last two open items uh, we did look at sidewalks in this as well as typically with most developments we require sidewalks in the front yard so that kind of came to our attention and I know Chairman Shaw has been a big proponent of up here of, of sidewalks so um, we did look at that in this situation um, it, it, in most of our industrial areas we don't have sidewalks that doesn't mean that they wouldn't be useful and most of them, because you have employees that want to go for walks or want to go walk over to Selena's Pizza or something like that. Um, with this having been pretty old and a pretty old subdivision, uh, the right of way is pretty narrow. So between the property line and the right of way is, is something like six feet or, or something in there. Um, and then that distance actually changes depending on the lot on Duvan Drive. Just the way they they platted it so it, it would be difficult to know where to put the 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 sidewalk and that it also probably wouldn't be able to fully be on the right-of-way side there may need to be some additional space we need or, or land that we would need from from the petitioner so in this situation we kind of said that there there needs to be a kind of a bigger master plan for this area of where that sidewalk would actually run. Um, there would also need to be maybe some property acquisition in there to actually make it work right. Um, that, this is also in a TIF district, so going forward kind of as some increment gets created, um, that's definitely something I think we could look at doing is can, can we get that master plan? To, can we acquire property and actually construct this? So. Hopefully, as you know, new businesses come in here, kind of help starting to invest that that we can get some sidewalks in. So um, that is, I believe that's it for our staff staff overview. Um, we did draft some some standards in here as well. So in the interest of time I maybe won't go over them now but if you guys have questions or any comments <laughs> about those we'd be glad to take them as well okay. uh, thank you, uh, so we'll move straight into questions uh, either for staff or for the petitioner uh, starting with Commissioner Stanton down at this end you know <clears throat> maybe I'm overlooking this but um, I heard of this company before is this a franchise or it is okay because um, I didn't see like a, a little bit overview on the company you know so maybe if you can speak to that when sure. uh, thanks I, I would definitely would hear that I just you know, they, they do have a, have a bio in the back of the I must overlook it. rather hear it directly sure uh, so as Dan mentioned my name is Paul Brown I'm a franchise owner for two men in a truck um, currently I have six locations in the Chicago area and uh, as Dan mentioned, I'm looking to consolidate three of them into a larger facility like this. Um, we're 
I don't own the property yet. We're under contract, and it's contingent on permitting and being able to, to make this work. Um, but yeah, trucks are you know, what we do. So you know, the truck parking is pretty crucial to our operations. Um, and as Dan touched upon, it's uh, the lot being very narrow and having to have that detention in the back. Uh, it's been challenging to try to try to get the space. The trucks need a lot of room to maneuver, and you know they're 35 feet, so pulling in and pulling out for safety reasons as well. Uh, we need the the parking to be open. Um, so. So these are all your trucks, or are you sub up? I mean, are you contractors? No, we don't run them out, or we don't. Okay. They all we own all of our trucks. Okay. Yeah, they're all. And it's all like commercial moving, residential moving. Yeah, mainly residential. Um, they're all they're straight trucks, twenty six foot straight trucks, uh, no semis. Um, they're all uh, uh, gas. We switched over to gasoline a couple of years ago, so there's no diesel. Um, they're all within two years old. So just out of curiosity, like what's the fleet, the amount of trucks that would be? It'd be 12 to 15 to 16 to there. there. Okay. Yeah, depending on the uh, how busy we are. We're pretty seasonal. Okay. So in the, in the busy season, we rent some extra trucks. So. Um, Thank you. Sure. Mr. Gatto? Mm, no, I don't have anything right now. Uh, no, I don't have anything right now. Okay. Uh, starting down at the end, Yeah, you mentioned uh, putting more trees on the west side, and I agree with that. The only problem I see with that is I'm assuming you'd be backing those trucks right up to that west line, right? One of those trucks 12 feet tall. Yeah, that, that's the challenge that we have. Trees are one of our enemies in the trucking industry. We hit a lot of tree branches going down the streets that overhang, so uh, that's why the landscape architect put the thinner uh, evergreens in there. Okay. Uh, they're softer, the trucks, if they do hit them, it's not gonna cause damage to them. Um, so that's why we went with the softer evergreens on that west side. Okay, yeah, it makes sense, just figured, you know. They don't have overhanging branches or if they have trucks being parked. Yeah, same in the front. You know, if the branches get too big, we're, we're flipping on them and causing damage to the trucks, not the branches yeah, We kind of recommended that early on, too, is talk, because it, it's hard. When you plant them, they're all small, but okay, is there something you could get that maybe has a higher canopy or something than what the truck is? So. Um, I think he'd, he had kind of settled on evergreen trees as they have a lower canopy, but they don't do as much damage. Mm -hmm. Just got to clean up some pine cones or something. Um, they do pine trees, but I, uh, we did kind of mention that early on as, you know, we, we know it's a challenge with the trees being there, but hopefully trying to get something in there that, yeah, that they can work with. So. Yeah, originally on that west side, we did have, uh, Fountain grasses throughout it, and then from working with Dan, uh, we wanted to have more of the canopy trees, so we went with the evergreens on the, on the west side. Perfect. Other questions? Mr. Manny? Oh, no comments. Uh, I got nothing. Okay. Um, I have one more cap. Um, Security cameras. Are you going to consider putting those in? Oh yeah. Okay. On the outside. Um, yeah, outside. We have cameras in our trucks too, okay. and on the inside the dash cam. So safety is one of our okay. priorities. Right. You know, especially with the, the security of the truck. Sometimes we keep customers' items over night storage, um, so we could have you know hundred thousand dollars. Sure. Makes sense. Um, and then the. The business to the west as well, the construction company, um, I approached him about if he was okay if we lightened up the landscaping, and he was fine with that and provided a letter. He doesn't have any windows on his building. And if you look at, Dan, can you go to one of the beginning slides where it shows the over? It's like a Google map one, yeah. So if you look on the left side, 
because you're looking at it. He's got all construction equipment there. He's had issues in the past, he said, with people you know, breaking into the, the fencing, so he'd rather have less landscaping there for people to hide in and be away from sure. the I'm sure with the apartments behind you back there, that gives a nice bird's eye view down into your uh, the property. Yeah, and that's why we're uh, we're putting evergreens on both sides. That yeah, if you can go back to yeah, actually to, to the photo that you were just at. In the middle there, on their property is a parking garage. It's an 85 foot parking garage with uh, it's a 10, 12 foot high. So we'll have. I didn't put anything behind there because it's already screened and we beefed it up on the on both sides with again all evergreens to buffer it. Now at the rear of that property I noticed when I was out there today, what's that outbuilding that's right there along the uh, the property line in the back? Yeah, that, that's going away. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, the company that's in there now does ATMs okay. and that was a trailer that they had for a showroom to show clients ATMs that that's going away so if you look on the slide again on the on the right side where the school district is you can see their detention in the back there right um, so I've used the same engineer for that and because that was going to take up so much of the land we ended up uh, designing it to have either concrete walls around it or the, the block around it we had to go deeper in order to meet the requirements right. just because of the, the lot so narrow and we mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. right so i guess that in one of our open comments too was the, the landscaping side of it was that you know we he did buffer the two sides of the garage but we were kind of looking at could did, did you guys have any preference on them carrying that all the way through and kind of buffering the, the the visual appearance to the entire back so um, it's kind of one of those where uh, that can create a, a nice buffered view um, but it also might be overkill if there's a garage there um, but there are five-story condos behind it so mm -hmm. yeah so um, staff is obviously looking for guidance and I appreciate you putting it in that, in that way um, so it's one of the things that I'd like to do on some of these points is just um, make sure that staff has the appropriate guidance and can uh, work with the petitioner. So I'll say for my own part, um, to your point about the continuous screening on it, that would be my preference. Um, I understand your rationale for breaking it there um, based on what's on the other side of the fence, uh, but we're dealing with uh, what's, what's here on this property, and, and I agree with staff uh, that a continuous line of screening uh, would, be, would be preferable. Now, there, there would be a fence going there as well, so you'd have the garage and then you'd have trees and a fence right there. So that's why he left it out there and beefed it up on the side because it seemed redundant to have a 10, 12 foot garage and then the trees and then a fence right there. So that's, that was his rationale though. The, the uh, you mean your landscape part? Landscape? <coughs> yeah. So I, I, I understand that. Uh, I'm, I'm, trying to make sure we give staff guidance uh, on the commission's preference. Um, so I, I've given mine, but of course, you know, I'm not one guy sitting up here. So I just kind of wanted to run down, uh, see what uh, the general consensus was there, because if there is no consensus on that matter, staff can move forward. With, uh, so any, any thoughts on that? Yay, nay. I mean, you never know that garage could not be there soon, you know. So that's, that's just kind of my thought it's i mean admittedly it's somewhat unlikely but mm -hmm. you never know um the, uh, that type of development they may uh, uh not do good maintenance and it may fall in disrepair and it may get taken down so and our thought too was maybe the the benefit is not having the parking lot landscaping trying to meet the trees on the perimeter as much as possible there's there's a greater benefit there to trees for just mm -hmm. in terms of shade and heat island effect and the overall environmental quality so our thought was you know that'll create a better screening than a fence well a visual screen for the residents um, to not see industrial properties and something that can be as these redevelop kind of carried through is you know hopefully eventually if you're living in those apartments or those condos you, you 
go on your balcony and you'd see a wall of trees instead of um, an industrial area. So that was just her thought on that. Yeah, again, I you know, stated my preference. I, I agree with that thought and also in the staff report we emphasize the, uh, the point of based on the existing conditions, uh, there's a lot of uh, potential variations that are practically necessary but the staff makes a point about uh, where the code, the, the details of the code can't be met in meeting the spirit of the code um, you know, uh, is important. So any other thoughts on just continuous screening around the back? I think it would, um, it would definitely, I mean, just in the look of it, I think it would make it look a lot better. But then like another commissioner said and stuff, you know, that's, if something did happen to that building, if it was taken down, if they decided, the owners or whatever decided they weren't going to do that anymore just because they couldn't keep up with it, then yeah, then we wouldn't have a big gate. I mean, you know, there's a fence there still, but the, the big gaping hole between by then, maybe the taller pine trees or whatever's going back there, evergreens, you know, it would, it would make sense to have that continuously and, and do it now, you know. Thoughts, comments on that? Um, feel strongly? Not at all. I'm just trying to make sure staff has the guidance that they're looking for. No, I agree with your, I with agree your with thoughts. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it makes sense. I'm good. Okay. Uh, another question I had, um, but I think you may have actually just answered it for me. I, I wasn't sure from the uh, drawings whether the uh, the north fence was only on either side of the garage or whether it was continuous. It sounds like you it's, said, it's continuous, okay. Um, and I just, for my part, I, I, uh, I would echo uh, what staff recommended about um, the materials uh, for the fencing uh, around the transformer, the trash, uh, et cetera. Uh, as far as PVC, the, um, the chain link that uh, is planned for down the west side, uh, I, I don't know if you've gone so far as to actually specking out the, the material, but we, when we discussed fencing, we talked about um, uh, making sure that it was either uh, a PVC, or, I'm sorry, a vinyl coated or some other type of corrosion resistant, resistant which uh, most materials are these days. I just want to make sure that we uh, are considering that. Sure, we'll make sure we, we look at exactly what that is and make sure it meets that. Okay. Um, so on the, on the west side, uh, is, is there actually a setback uh, between the property and the uh, current construction to the west, or is that a zero lot line? Five feet, I believe. Feet. So that's five feet from the the edge of the curb to the property line, I believe. So it's five foot of landscaping, kind of in that or grass in that area, and, depending and on where you're at. Is it fair to say Kern has no landscaping down that side of the building on their five feet? Right? Correct. There's, there's almost, mo most of these out here have no, nothing outside of the so a little bit in the front yard. So. I think they're, so their zero lot line there with their parking lot and fence in the back. And the uh, proposed parking lot on the south side, um, again, it was hard for me to tell from the plan, but it appears that it goes also right to the lot line. Is that? Sorry, say that again. The, the, the parking lot on the south side on the Duvan Street, Duke yes. Drive side. Uh, does the actual parking lot go all the way to the property line? No. So that has. I'm not sure of the scaling on it. I put it's five or ten feet there from from the parking lot to the property line. Um, oh, okay. You know what? And now that I'm looking at your buffer yard requirement, it says south view buffer yard uh, ten ten feet. Is yes. Yeah. Is that the 10 feet we're talking about on page 
Yeah, so I believe it's 10 feet on that side. And that was to also the, the sorry, one of the variations is the parking lot, how far it encroaches into the front yard. Yes. And we did not want it to really encroach 100% into the front yard, so giving it some setback. Um, they had originally, so he, he did kind of appease us by taking out one parking spot to do that. Um, he, it, it's in line with the, so to his neighbor to the, to the west, it'll kind of be in line with that parking lot set back there. Um, and that was kind of our rationale was to maybe at least carry that. He'll, uh, it'll give him some setback there in the front, not 100%, um, but that there, there'll be 10 feet there or so. Okay. For, for landscaping. So I appreciate you clarifying that. Uh, again, I, in, in the spirit of giving staff and the petitioner uh, a sense of where I'm at, and perhaps the other commissioners, uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards being comfortable with the encroachment of the uh, parking lot um, <coughs> lining up with current construction to the west, which is consistent with, as you state in the report, the vast majority of uh, the other businesses there. So to me, that seems it seems in keeping with the spirit of what's already there. Um, it's not. Uh, uh, I, I think it's consistent where, uh, with the development. Um, where, uh, where where I'm not comfortable is with the uh, variation for the fencing to extend beyond the front of the building. Um, I, I think that that's. Uh, that has it's a different um, style different look um, coming towards the front of the property um, and I realize you know if you were to have the, the parking lot go all the way out but the fence stops that, you know and from a, a practical perspective there's limited value from a security perspective and, and that um, I'm, what I'm trying to explain if you take them in isolation um, I'm more comfortable with the fence, uh, I mean with the parking lot, and I'm not comfortable with the fence on that. So again, that's my preference. Uh, I just want to make sure your staff has clarity. I mean, uh, and we have brought some of those concerns up to them too, is, uh, and even with the fencing out there, is it basically functions almost as a facade in some ways. Is, uh, that's 100 feet of the, of the frontage up there is going to be almost a fence so um, he had kind of in response to that bumped it up to, to PVC fencing that would match to at least give it a, something a little more substantial than chain link or something like that which exists out there but that was kind of his response to, to yes. that concern. So. Yeah I, I absolutely agree. Um, I, I realize what's already out there um, and we're speaking for myself not looking necessarily to take advantage of this redevelopment and you know go for broke and, and literally for broke and have um, you know, the gold you know, gold plated uh, fencing out there uh, we do have to be practical here as well so uh, you you have a oh, question or comment piggyback on what Dan and so originally we and I think code was chain link on there and so uh, part of our rationale with the landscaping was to try to make it have as much curb appeal as possible and to uh, to screen you know using the fencing instead of the chain link doing it as a PVC and then having the landscape in front of that so that you're not seeing you know the trucks plus on top of it it was the security issue like I said of having a lot of equipment trucks were yeah. in the back of the so the fence is locked during the evenings no so no. anybody can drive in there then we, yeah, originally, as Dan mentioned, we were going to put a security gate in right. there, but there became issues with uh, the, if somebody left, came out of the building, they'd be trapped in the parking lot, the fire department being able to get in. Um, so the compromise was getting rid of that security gate okay. and having the fence go to the, to the, to the drive. So I, I appreciate the... <coughs> step up to uh, above above the requirement of, of, uh, of chain link and then you know, additional uh, landscaping, et cetera. Um, 
my preference would be to be in line with the front of the building. So I absolutely recognize uh, why you want it there. Um, and just as far as the sticking point, I just want to see where the rest of the commission is on that collectively. I agree. With the I front. agree. I mean, it's, it, I, if, if you don't mind, it's, it's really going to throw off what we've been, been working on here. I'm going to lose some crucial spots for, for my trucks and not having that on there. You know, I've been working with, with Dan on this, and I, Dan, I thought we, you know, we... Well, let me, let me clarify, just because I, I don't want to, I don't want to um, get you overly concerned. Yeah. Uh, what we're doing here is a workshop. We're working through... You know, just all these details, asking the questions, uh, trying to understand alternatives, especially for me anyway, especially on a property like this, which is not, you know, vacant land where we have a, a blank canvas. You're trying to do the best with, with what you have. And I, I recognize that. Um, what I'm looking at is um, in trying to be in keeping with uh, the standards that we do have and trying not to go too far astray from those. You know, what's the balance, right? So, in, in, in a perfect world, my, my preference is you know, not to go beyond the front of the building. Um, but we do need to be practical on that. Right? So, so um, what I'm trying to do is get an understanding from the rest of the commission about how strongly anybody else feels about that. Is that a make or break type thing? Um, perhaps I should have been a little uh, clearer on that myself. That's my preference. I'm not saying that, you know, absolutely that's the make or break point for me. Um, and, and I'm trying to work through a lot of these things that, you know, are like that. You know, I have a preference for this, and I think we should be closer to the code on this. Um, but in the end, I still have, and everyone has to decide whether on balance, you know, we can accept, you know, a little bit here, a little there. So, um, because yeah, I'm not a professional planner, and it's not my property. Uh, I'm trying to explore what the options are, and are there possibilities we can you know, move up or down in certain areas? And, you know, and that's really what this workshop is for: okay. is to work through all these details uh, so that you and uh, staff, when we do go to uh, the next step, nobody's blindsided like, "Whoa, I wish you had told me that." So I, I apologize if I've given you a bit I'm of a through you know. something like this. So I, I'm not sure what the process was, but I appreciate you clarifying. Okay. Do we know what the distance is? Yeah. So I hope that's in the variation. That's what. I can't remember. So I forgot that. Yeah. So 12 the. Twelve feet. Yeah. Twelve point two nine okay. feet is actually that distance between the parking lot and then the property line. Um, I, and then one of my so one of my thoughts as we were talking about this is maybe it, so it sounds like your bigger concern is maybe the fencing over just the parking lot and obviously the fencing's there kind of for their security purposes if you're going to have trucks parked right there is, is could you flip the employee parking and the truck parking um, location so you'd have employee parking closer to the property line which is maybe your bigger security threat if someone's going to go in there. Um, so that way you wouldn't have trucks right there in front. And that's kind of, because when you're looking at that, you're kind of thinking, uh, you want to, if you have a truck parked right there at the front in front of the building, you'd really want that fenced in. But maybe if you flip that and at night, you know, that gives you some buffer before you, the next truck and maybe then fencing. I, I don't know if the petitioners you're, you're not talking then. You're about east versus west, right? You're talking about uh, north to front south. To back on that, uh, yes. North to south. Yeah, you'd kind of flip it north to south and push the truck parking further north and take the employee parking and push that to the south. Is there potentially a, I don't want to say safety, but like a, a, a property safety? I mean, well, I could, if you, you know, bumping trucks into employees' cars or something. Yeah, if you if you want to go to the, the where the warehouse doors would go, I can kind of explain the you know the logic. Okay, so on the far right side is where the loading dock is with all the boxes, packing supplies, and every morning the guys are loading up their trucks with all that stuff. So the trucks are 
all the doors are open, the guys are carrying stuff out. So if we had the employee parking there, it wouldn't really be feasible to have the trucks in the back by the detention to, to get to it. Plus you're gonna have guys crossing a lot when the trucks are coming in. Yeah, there's a safety and an efficiency. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of had a feel that was just a thought I had, I guess, is maybe that could work, but I always know there's some functional issues yeah. that you can't really, that I it's, can't you know, anticipate. The narrowness of that lot just really is, is what has been the biggest challenge with it to try to design how to. So what I would say on that point is, that, you know, we're, we've had a little bit of time to read this report, but certainly not as long as you've had to try and figure it out I mean, as the staff has. Um, so, I, you know, we're, we're probably asking uh, a lot of questions and trying to move the puzzle pieces around that you've already been through, you know, and um, for me anyway, that's the process, you know, we're looking at all this, um, and if there are uh, logistical or practical reasons why uh, something must be the way it is, then it, it, at least when we look at the standards for variation, you know, we feel more comfortable saying, you know, to, to, to have a, a viable economic return on this property, you know, it's, it meets the standards. You know? um, and if, they're, uh, if we're um, asking for a variation just because, you know, we're going to squeeze that extra bit out, and, but the property can otherwise return uh, you know, a value, and that might not be the standard. So again, um, I, I apologize if the line of questioning <laughs> seems to imply one thing or another. Uh, just making sure that we're exploring all alternatives before we just say you know, we're good. Okay. Uh, yeah. With the um, so the the fence for that lot is you are talking about it's a, what 12.29 feet or whatever. And can you go to the um, landscape plan? Can you bring that up? I mean, is, okay, there's a driveway there I'm seeing, and say, is that where the other parking is gonna be then? Right next to that fence? So, so there'll be three driveway, three curb yep. cuts into this. Okay. There's one that'll be a truck dock that's only used by like deliveries. Okay, so, that, that's, so that's the one just to the okay. east of the new parking lot, and then there's another one further east for the, okay. the existing parking All lot. Right. So that's a truck dock. How, how tall is the south? Fence, the front. It's the same height all the way around. Yes, I believe everything's six feet, right? Six feet. Okay. Um, I, so, uh, so, and we, again, we had gone through that with them and even with the parking lot side of like, can you push this back to the building? But the, the, the concern was for him going forward was, Doing that's a loss of another two truck parking spaces, I think, is, is what that would end up requiring. So that's that's how we ended up on this plan and, no, I, and with I, the variations. Just I recognize that entirely, that. And, and as I said, to, to be honest, uh, I, I don't have much concern about the parking lot itself. Right? To me, that you know, it's actually in keeping with what, what else is out there. If you set the parking lot all the way back, you have this little park space out there, and maybe employees can picnic or something. But um, you know, the, uh, bringing the parking lot out there is consistent. Uh, I'm, what I'm trying to do for myself is the standard is to have the fence uh, at the building, and I'm, I'm trying to you know make sure that uh, when I'm thinking about it, I can satisfy in my own mind that the uh, um, that there's really uh, not much of an alternative. Nothing yeah. So uh, one point, and uh, I did search through the report. Maybe I missed it. The hours of operation. Uh, what What are your regular hours of operation expected? You know, typically our guys get there maybe seven thirty in the morning, load up their trucks. They're out of there by eight. Uh, they're coming back usually five six o'clock. Just typical. Okay, uh, there's not like a third shift or something? Oh, no. Well, no we have hours of service. Our drivers can only drive 10 hours in a day, so they, they would go over hours of service. We don't have an afternoon shift or a third shift. Okay. 
and I, I'm, I'm actually very familiar with Dubang Drive, so uh, that actually seems like kind of a late start uh, for, for the neighborhood. So yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I was mostly concerned about big trucks backing up, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, if there is a residential uh, area right there. Yeah, no, we, uh, most moves start, customers want us there between, you know, 8, 30, 9 o'clock, so we can't get out any earlier. Okay. Uh, so, and last point here, really not as much uh, of, a, of a question as just a, a statement. Dan alluded to it earlier. Um, I, I am a, a big proponent about complete streets, complete sidewalks, um, and uh, throughout the town and whenever we redevelop, uh, I think it's critically important that we at least attempt to make accommodations for sidewalks here. Dan and I uh, talked about this earlier today. Uh, make sure that we consider it um, and there's a because of the nature of the uh, right-of-ways uh, that are uh, out there with the property lines it's not practical uh, to have sidewalks throughout Dubai Drive today um, but over time if, if we don't if we don't make accommodations for them as we redevelop then we'll never have them uh, but so what I suggested again is that uh, within the landscape plan, uh, not looking to actually have a sidewalk there, um, but to the greatest extent possible, uh, if we can accommodate the potential for one being there in the future. Uh, so whether we're talking about um, uh, shrubs over trees or you know, something, whatever is appropriate there, uh, again, that's my preference. I'm, I'm not hinging my uh, approval uh, on that. I just want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to potentially accommodate sidewalks. <coughs> in the future. And I'll look at the plans prior to make this and just uh, our typical commercial sidewalk width is six feet. So I think at least even if that six feet maybe goes onto his property or does something, at least make sure maybe there's a six foot clearance without tree trees there or where tree stumps will grow into um, so maybe a little bit yeah. wider than six feet um, just and there can be shrubs in there and stuff that because it's going to be more than 10 years from now where that would happen but um, you know then maybe you could do shrubs there and just make sure there's a path of there would be a path of about six feet so I can double check that and we can scale it out and make sure that exists in the landscape plan as long as the petitioners open open to making that change we can kind of look into that and have his landscape architects maybe move some stuff around slightly so yeah like i said that's not a, a critical make or break uh, so we make sure it's considered and again the standard might be a six foot sidewalk um, but as with everything else we're looking at here and uh, other properties um, hopefully as we redevelop which are likely even more difficult um, you know just because six foot's our standard perhaps in the long run we end up with a four foot uh, sidewalk or even a three foot quite frankly if, if we had a little three foot sidewalk throughout the whole thing that, uh, that would be preferable so, um, yeah i think at a minimum we have to do four but yeah somewhere in there as long for as we ADA? yeah so i think it has to be a little over three feet okay. there has to be clearances and stuff so typically the minimum absolute minimum i've seen it go down to is four for a public okay. sidewalk but so if you're going to have one it has to be that but yeah. we're okay to have nothing yeah <laughs> yeah well <laughs> okay. yeah it, right. it, it's it's always that challenge is like <laughs> the, when you put it in it has to meet those code requirements but you don't have to put it in and right. that includes the slopes and everything else which get extremely difficult and to the t you know two percent cross slopes and stuff like that where it's you know the moment you put it in it's got to meet all that but you don't have to have that either so okay um and the only uh other point I'd like to add on that concept there is I just want to uh, uh, remind uh, whomever that when we look at the legacy district downtown, every time we, we do a special use on any one of those, um, uh, staff has been really good about making sure that the, the plan is to eventually have right away for an alleyway uh, down on uh, Oak Park Avenue in the legacy district. We don't currently have that, but every time uh, something comes before us they secure that right of way and they've been really good about that I view this as kind of the same thing <coughs> we can't have an alley all the way through Oak Park Avenue 
yet, but eventually we'll get there, and it's kind of the same thing for me with the sidewalk. All right, that's that's all I have on that. Any other questions or comments, directions for staff uh, uh, or uh, for the petitioners so that they can move forward between now and next time? No. No. Good. Good. All right. Because the last one, I. I guess I heard from you, but maybe it'll help us uh, clarify it is the the fencing on the north side of it too. We had touched on the trees, but are is everyone on board with is it okay with wood or is PVC preferred? I know typically you guys have gone PVC um, so well my my preference yeah. would be P for PVC uh, uh, for all the reasons that you cited um, one of the primary reasons, uh, drivers I should say, uh, for attracting a, a new business and trying to uh, maximize the incentives to uh, bring a new business in is to, to raise the increment, raise the property value, um, and especially being up against that residential property, um, the higher the standard we can keep there, that also uh, will help maintain the standards in the residential. It's a, it's a very high density um, development and so we want to make sure that that, that isn't the price to back there as well. My, my preference would be for PVC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. And okay. then with respect to the continuous trees, again, I think that's preference. I think you know, all of that stuff has to be weighed against everything else. And we'll see what you guys work out. Okay. Yeah, I'll work with the petitioner, obviously. I mean, I know it's uh, some of this stuff's more costly, but hopefully we can make it work out. And, you know, it's always easier to spend other people's money. Um, but hopefully the, the wood to PVC won't be too bad out there. And hopefully that'll, like you said, kind of help, help boost the, the look from the residential side and then cut off any maintenance or anything that you'd have to do on it for, for a long time. So not needing to paint it or stain it and deal with that. So. Could we do some sort of a compromise that we did PVC and then not have to put the landscape behind that 10 foot garage to kind of counterbalance the cost of, and I, I get what you're saying. Um, I'm just, you know, like Dan said, from a cost perspective, you know, wood's obviously a lot cheaper. Um, well, I think we had, so we had cut a, and kind of on that note is typically on that north side, you'd also be required to do shrubs and bushes, and we kind of said, all right, that's redundant to the fence, but the trees and the fence kind of seemed, at, at least when I was looking at it, to serve different purposes. The fence is really going to screen the ground level, trees kind of buffer it at a higher level, and the trees also have the more, you know, environmental value to the loss of trees in the parking lot so that was kind of our thought on that but agreeing that you don't need shrubs up against that or any type of bushes or anything like that so that probably wouldn't be maintained very well anyways mm -hmm. well so one of the one of the reasons i would say for my preference on the continuous line there um and i don't have anything uh, more detailed to look at, so this, I'm just imagining this, that although I see the practical reason for not doing it because of the, both the fence and also the, the structure in the back, um, I'm, what I'm visualizing is, you know, kind of uh, gap T, you know, just we have, you know, trees on this side, trees on this side, and then we're, we're seeing this fence, right? So um, I'm a, for me anyway, I'm agreeable to, as you said, you know, work work something out. I think if I, you know, if I had to, the PVC fence is probably you know the higher preference for me. Um, but the, you know, just having a straight up gap, uh, trees and trees. If some if somehow the um, landscape architect could come up with you know an interesting alternative, you know, which is is more cost effective, but not necessarily just you know, kind of this tree tree. So maybe they could be spaced out a little bit more or something. That'll be a good question for the landscape architect is, you know, these, these are pretty hefty trees. So could, could you space them out and eventually would that, would, 
know how far could they be spaced to actually kind of create that screen wall yeah, or maybe thinking, you like, do like two or, or something yeah just it's like a little bunch he did go pretty heavy on each side because yeah. of that so maybe if so you maybe go a space normal up. width all the way across would probably be and then like behind that behind that garage structure maybe not a continuous wall but you know, toss something here maybe with a couple of the shrubs that he's talking about again i'm not a designer for landscaping but i'm just imagining that something to, to break up the monotony just don't leave it after this sure yeah yeah okay so and, and again i, I recognize you load that whole thing up You're, you have to balance your your, uh, your budget there so, uh, any other thoughts suggestions there we uh may let them march forward so Yes. All right. Excellent. I, I, for one, I really appreciate you coming to town. Hey, yeah. uh, you guys have been tough Everybody's been great to work with. I just want to say that from the get-go with the uh, tax incentives and working with Dan and him. So I appreciate your guys' time. Right. Good luck. Okay. Good luck. Thank you again. Hey, you're good on this, right, Dan? Yes. All right. Yeah. So you're you're free to go if you want to, or you can okay. stick around for the ending either way. But you, your stuff's you done. So. No, I'll go. Nope. Thank you. All right. Have a good rest. Definitely don't want to keep you around. I'll I'll shoot you an email tomorrow okay. for Kelly. Okay. Um, so hopefully that was exciting for our new commissioners. Appreciate you partaking and what it's all about. Uh, we are moving on now to good of the order. Do you have anything interesting to hear about? Sure. Lots of lots of interesting stuff. So I'll, I'll run through it really quick. But um, I'll, I'll start exciting, and then maybe I'll go to the boring stuff afterwards. So we do have a lot of downtown stuff moving forward pretty quick here. Um, a lot of it's coming before you guys. So. We have the boulevard which is the main south street project that could be coming forward here in august it looks like um, there's also bremen station which is right by that main south street one which is also has plans in under review right now as well so those should be moving forward um, the north street plaza the harmony square we're working um, with lakota group on that and that's been moving forward slowly um so with the sure you, yeah i was that? like Power. Bremen, Bremen Station? Is that, is that the, the name now? Cause That'll, that? It's could, generally been referred to as the Bremen Cash Store. I just want to. Correct. Uh, they, it, it'll be Bremen, Bremen Stations. As a, I mean, granted, that yeah, how many names has the boulevard been under? Um, but Bremen Station is the, the name of that development now. So it right. was Bremen Cash Store and it was like Blackstone right. or something. I just want to make sure we're talking about the South Street development is the larger development. Correct. And they're still calling that the Boulevard? Yes, that'll be the Boulevard. But the one that's closer to Citibank is, is on that kind of pie-shaped lot. That's Bremen Station. Bremen yes. Station. Okay. Excellent. And that'll include some um, right up. There's that little triangle part of yes. the right of way that's mm -hmm. really awkward out there if you've ever been there. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll part part of the the plan is to have that be developed as part of this development so um, it'll kind of come out to a point there I, I saw some of the earlier plans and I'm assuming they haven't changed too much it looks like yeah so those will kind of be coming at the same time too which will be nice to kind of make sure they're cohesive they they're using this you know the sight lines will line up and they'll kind of look look and act the same um, yeah, so, so if you guys have any questions, feel free. On the boulevard, uh, I will just, There's again, I'll say for myself, uh, because that is such a significant uh, uh, project, and, you know, economically as well as just it's big, um, uh, to me, a very important element of it, not just the, the design the function of it, and is everything in the right place and all that. It's, I mean, the look of it is, is critically important from my perspective, because uh, that could all, now once it's built, it's, it's gonna be there a long time, and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna set the standards. So just to, uh, what I would ask of the rest of the commission is, way before we even see the plan, just make sure that you're really giving some thought to um, uh, you know, what you would expect and what, uh, you know, what you would like to see even before it's set in, in front of you, because I think that's gonna uh, give staff and, uh, 
And if you just simply look across the street at the Oak Park Avenue train station and the standard that that has set, um, I think that you know, when the plans finally do come before us, that's going to be, you know, to me, that's kind of the bar right there. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's something that everyone, can, the train station that everyone associates with, with Tinley Park, and this will be just as visible and, and prominent, if not more than that. Yeah, cause it's been so we've, we've definitely been driving that home. I know Kim, Kimberly's kind of the lead on it, so she's been driving that home, That and Paula's the, the architecture guru, um, so I know they've been driving it home to them, and we'll definitely echo your concerns or any, anyone else's comments that we can kind of echo and relay those to them. So. Great. So, uh, you, yeah, where else? Oh, it's okay. uh, the, so there's the North Street Plaza, which is happening just east of, um, of T Hands. Uh, um, there's the liquor store there now that the village owns that property, and we're looking at developing the the Harmony Square Plaza. So that's that's gone through some village board meetings, and a lot of people know about that. So that's marching forward. Um, the the rest of the North Street site and the Central Middle School site, um, some of that, so the, the rest of the North Street site is under contract right now from a developer that's looking to, to kind of do something bigger out there and maybe connect it to the Central Middle School site. So potentially those could be, the plaza and that development could be marching forward kind of at the, at the same time and, and tied together. So um, there's no concrete plans in or anything for the North Street stuff that we're reviewing, but that's exciting and kind of happening at the same time. So um, uh, besides that, I think the last meeting, Kimberly had mentioned to you guys too, that attic door building has plans under review and some interest in it for wine bar or restaurant um, situation there that'll tie in nicely with, with Banging Gavel, we think. So the proposal there is more than just a wine bar there? It, there'll be food Ooh. too. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so that those plans are under review. Yeah, uh, the and I know Bing and Gavel. The the people that are looking at that are, are talking with them too to see how how can they tie those together um, since they're pretty complementary. Um, yeah, yeah, and and two kind of historic buildings too. It, it, it'll be kind of a cool setup there. So uh, the. Tenel, uh, Tinley Park Mental Health Center, our RFPs were requested from three developers, so that kind of went out um, if and when Tinley buys that. And I know um, the mayor and Dave and, uh, and a bunch of them have been going out trying to push the, the state to move their process along in terms of bids and cost and, and appraisals. Um, but at the same time, we're moving forward with the RFPs on, on with the three developers that had submitted proposals earlier on that site. So nothing's concrete in there yet, but it, there's at least some movement going on there. So, so Dan, I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm not going to ask you for an answer. Uh, I, I don't really be prepared for it. But what I would ask with the mental health center, it's definitely another uh, high profile um, and uh, there's a lot of interest uh, in what we do there. From a process perspective outside of RFP, um, what I would ask, and perhaps at the next meeting, um, we could just get a quick readout on this. Um, when that process uh, moves its way through, what, what is the plan commission's role? Uh, what can the commissioners expect uh, as, as that master plan is developed? And how's the process for it coming through the plan commission, uh, giving a recommendation to the board? So again, uh, I, don't, I don't really want an answer right now, but I would just sure. ask that uh, in some of our upcoming meetings, depending on the workload, it would be good to get a, a you know kind of a brief timeline. It doesn't have to be specific specific dates. It's like you know, once this happens, here's the plan commission is sure. Uh, yeah, and and some of that will be dependent on what they're proposing. But you you guys are definitely going to have some strong roles in terms of zoning, site plans, any PUD. Uh, Likely, it'll probably be a PUD, whatever they're doing out there. It's a big enough site, and we're going to want 
I think the village is going to want enough control over the aesthetics and, and the unique nature of it, um, and just not that way too. Whoever the developer is isn't stuck with our code trying to make whatever they're doing fit our code. Right. Maybe they can do something kind of unique. So any of that stuff goes between you guys. Um, I can maybe maybe the next meeting or something we can give you a little more detail of what those steps would be. But yeah, it, it's so also there's very there's dependent. Some, yeah, it's very dependent on what would actually end up happening there. Right. So, um, but all of so, so a lot of stuff would come before you guys for that. So, I just want to make sure that because uh, to, to a large part, it's a, it's a bit of a mystery for the public, and um, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, all the plan commissioners are um, well versed in uh, what the expectation is going to be, how the process is going to move through here and you know, so we can all be uh, prepared and, and thinking about it and not just uh, you know well you put this thing in front of us sure yeah and, and there's and well, there's no plans or anything us. for it now because that's kind of it has been this mystery there's no plans sitting on my desk or anything it, so it, it we're going to keep you guys updated kind of as stuff comes in and as stuff's decided whether it's by the board or if how the sale works out because a lot of that will be dependent too is, is does the village buy it or do we not and that's that's well above me I think it's going to be above this board but the plan commission too it'll be kind of a board level decision so yeah. um, that'll kind of play out what your role is too is do we have to dive more into the to the to the zoning side of it if we don't buy it do, do we have to tighten that stuff down um, or yeah, so I don't, I don't want you guys to have to report out on it prematurely, but yeah. um, at least at a very high level um, to give the commission clarity as well as you know the, the viewing public. Sure. Right. Yeah. So we'll keep you guys updated as it moves along. Um, besides that, the Haytham, uh, 159th and Oak Park Avenue that got approved at the Village Board meeting. So just. Um, He's excited to get moving forward on that and kind of dress up the corner with landscaping and get his. Do you know his, uh, move forward with uh, IDOT? Uh, any, any I'm not 100% sure that was okay. Kimberly's case. Um, and I know he's had some health issues on his side. So if he hasn't, it's all conditioned that he has okay. to get that prior to the occupancy of the apartment and the permits for the apartment. So. We do have some leverage there to make sure that happens. I'm not sure though, so I'll I can check on that for next meeting. Um, and then last is and the most exciting is small cell antenna ordinance um, that was approved by the board. Not not what you the plan commission had previously worked on. This is more a reaction to the state law that basically opened up public rights away. Um, to, to sell companies to locate their their antennas on basically we had a they set limits that the, a village could adopt up to those limits um, and if you didn't adopt anything they could basically just go on your polls it's a, almost was a free reign type thing so we that's passed now there's no free reign they have to get permits there are some restrictions um, in terms of size and height how much they pay us rents if they're on our poles um, we what's not in that though is is design standards and there is some allowances for design standards on these so I'm working on that now and I think that'll come to you guys pretty quick here probably in August or September um, at the latest to, to get those design standards in with with a strong focus on the downtown is not really wanting to see these on our decorative column light poles as, as much as possible or if they do that how how do we screen it as much as possible so there's only so much we can tell them they can and can't do but we can at least push say you got to make this look good um, so i'm working on those now and that should be <coughs> forward and so were there that's... for that um uh, did the uh, did the ordinance that they adopt uh rescind or supersede uh, our existing codes is there any sort of text amendment that is going to have to come before us to clean up whatever was left is yeah. that what, that's what you're working on yeah so i i guess what what they passed superseded the the normal code for anything covered by the state law so any small cell antennas that met what that's 
the size and the height that the state law spelled out, that supersedes it. If it doesn't meet that code, our zoning restrictions are still in place. They would okay. still they would still need special uses and stuff like that. Um, what you guys had worked on when Stephanie was here, that so that's going to be part of the design guidelines. That whole package is going to come back to you guys. Okay. It basically went through here, um, went through community development committee. Mm -hmm. Everything was ready for the board to adopt it, and then it got put on hold because of the changes to the small cell section of it. So we're, we're making that meet the code now and then putting in design standards and letting you guys take another look at it, um, and then we'll get it to the board to adopt. So it'll, th this will actually, what's, what'll come before you isn't just the design standards, it'll actually be the whole um, antenna code again. So, um, but something that except for the new people you guys have probably seen and then it'll be good to have some some new eyes maybe a second look at it um, but it's been vetted so and Stephanie did most of the heavy lifting back then with the code updates so hopefully it won't be too painful it'll just be the design standards being added to it so. All right. So that, that concludes it for us, right? Yep, that's it All for right. the, the so staff. Any notes. other comments from uh, any of the commissioners? And again, welcome aboard to our new commissioners. Hopefully, you come back to the next one. <laughs> if you need to turn you off or anything. Uh, hearing none, I uh, will now receive comments from the public. And now I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So second. Uh, Commissioner Stanton. Second. Commissioner Manning. I, I probably should have uh, suggested a new commissioner to get a chance there, but uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Aye.